The last sermon of John Bunyan, preached 12 days before his death, August 19th, 1688, in London, at Mr. Gammon's Meeting House, near Whitechapel, upon the scripture, John 1, 13, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The words have a dependence on what goes before, and therefore I must direct you to them for the right understanding of it. You have it thus, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. In the words before, you have two things. First, some of his own rejecting him when he offered himself to them. Second, others of his own receiving him and making him welcome. Those that reject him, he also passes by. But those that receive him, he gives them power to become the sons of God. Now, lest anyone should look upon it as good luck or fortune, says he, They were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They that did not receive him, they were only born of flesh and blood. But those that receive him, they have God to their father. They receive the doctrine of Christ with a vehement desire. First, I will show you what he means by blood. They that believe are born to it as an heir is to an inheritance. They are born of God, not of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, not of blood, that is, not by generation, not born to the kingdom of heaven by the flesh, not because I am the son of a godly man or woman. That is meant by blood. Acts 17, 26, He hath made of one blood all nations. But when he says here, not of blood, He rejects all carnal privileges they did boast of. They boasted they were Abraham's seed. No, no, says he, it is not of blood. Think not to say you have Abraham to your father. You must be born of God if you go to the kingdom of heaven. Second, nor of the will of the flesh. What must we understand by that? It is taken for those vehement inclinations that are in man to all manner of looseness, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That must not be understood here. Men are not made the children of God by fulfilling their lustful desires. It must be understood here in the best sense. There is not only in carnal men a will to be vile, but there is in them a will to be saved also, a will to go to heaven also. But this it will not do. It will not privilege a man in the things of the kingdom of God. Natural desires have the things of another world. They are not an argument to prove a man shall go to heaven whenever he dies. I am not a free willer. I do abhor it. Yet there is not the wickedest man but he desires, some time or another, to be saved. He will read some time or other, Or it may be, pray, but this will not do. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. There is willing and running, and yet no purpose. Romans 9.16 Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not obtained it. Verse 30 Here I do not understand as if the apostle had denied a virtuous course of life to be the way to heaven. But that a man without grace, though he have natural gifts, yet he shall not obtain privilege to go to heaven and be the Son of God. Though a man without grace may have a will to be saved, yet he cannot have that will God's way. Nature, it cannot know anything but the things of nature. The things of God knows no man but by the Spirit of God. Unless the Spirit of God be in you, it will leave you on this side the gates of heaven." Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It may be some may have a will, a desire that Ishmael may be saved. Know this, it will not save thy child. 
If it was our will, I would have you all go to heaven. How many are there in the world that pray for their children and cry for them and are ready to die for them, and this will not do? God's will is the rule of all. It is only through Jesus Christ, which were born not of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now I come to the doctrine. Men that believe in Jesus Christ, to the effectual receiving of Jesus Christ, they are born to it. He does not say they shall be born to it, but they are born to it. Born of God unto God and the things of God, before he receives God to eternal salvation. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now unless he be born of God, he cannot see it. Suppose the kingdom of God be what it will. He cannot see it before he be begotten of God. Suppose it be the gospel. He cannot see it before he be brought into a state of regeneration. Believing is the consequence of the new birth, not of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. First, I will give you a clear description of it under one similitude or two. A child, before it be born into the world, is in the dark dungeon of its mother's womb. So a child of God, before he be born again, is in the dark dungeon of sin, sees nothing of the kingdom of God. Therefore, it is called a new birth. The same soul has love one way in its carnal condition, another way when it is born again. Second, as it is compared to a birth resembling a child in his mother's womb, so it is compared to a man being raised out of the grave. And to be born again, it is to be raised out of the grave of sin. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. To be raised from the grave of sin is to be gotten and born. Revelation 1.5 There is a famous instance of Christ. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the firstborn from the dead, unto which our regeneration alludeth. That is, if you be born again by seeking those things that are above, then there is a similitude betwixt Christ's resurrection and the new birth, which was born, which was restored out of this dark world, and translated out of the kingdom of this dark world, into the kingdom of his dear Son, and made us live a new life. This is to be born again. And he that is delivered from the mother's womb, it is the help of the mother, so he that is born of God, it is by the Spirit of God. I must give you a few consequences of a new birth. First of all, a child, you know, is incident to cry as soon as it comes into the world. For if there be no noise, they say it is dead. You that are born of God and Christians, if you be not criers, there is no spiritual life in you. If you be born of God, you are crying ones. As soon as he has raised you out of the dark dungeon of sin, you cannot but cry to God, What must I do to be saved? As soon as ever God had touched the jailer, he cries out, Men and brethren, what must I do to be saved? Oh, how many prayerless professors is there in London that never pray. Coffee houses will not let you pray. Trades will not let you pray. Looking glasses will not let you pray. But if you was born of God, you would.